So hopefully you're all here to learn about uh, PowerShell type systems with staff. <laughs> oh no, like tomorrow. That's, yeah. Hopefully you're all here to come and learn about how we chose uh, the the process we went through to create DBA checks, which is configurable pester tests for a SQL estate. My name's Rob. Um, I pretty much answer to Beard because of this lady here, because that's what she calls me. Um, I'm a consultant, I work for myself, I go and do PowerShell training and automation stuff. Once upon a time, I was the guy that went, no, you may not have my introduction to database. <laughs> um, last year, I was half of a best speaker. Can you guess who the other half was? At SQL Saturday Dublin, where all of our SQL community heroes had given presentations, and we got the best one, and we were absolutely stoked. Um, and I love Pesta, and I love open source. I've contributed and evangelized for DBA tools, I've written DBA reports, and we've done DBA checks. Who are you? I'm a bit more formal. So my name is Chrissy Lemaire, and I am a senior systems engineer at NATO Special Ops headquarters in Belgium. I work for a federal contractor named General Dynamics. Databases I coming out of airplanes with a machine gun. No Oracle. <laughs> so my SQL is all right. Um, so I've been a SQL Server data pro since 1999, um, and I've worked. Sorry, I've been a PowerShell MVP since 2015. Uh, most of my PowerShell work does revolve around SQL Server, but I also do a bit of SharePoint, VMware, and general stuff. Um, also, I just joined the PASS DevOps virtual chapter, which is at devops.pass.org. That is... What does um, PASS stand for? PASS is the Professional Association of SQL Server. No, it's not. No. No. PASS used Thank to be you. the Professional Association of SQL Server, but then Data Platform became more than just SQL Server, so now PASS is just pass. So kind of like news not new? Uh, yeah. Yes. But it's still cool. Oh, and so Lee Holmes was super nice. He said, remember that time you contributed code to PowerShell? This is T-Tiny Me back in 2005. Oh. I actually contributed comments. I was too shy. <laughs> And he was very kind. I sat at his desk. I was so excited. I do have a strong Linux background, and I was really excited to see that we were going to have something super cool on Windows as well. I'll do your slide then. So the, <laughs> the agenda is we're going to do a quick, quick background. <laughs> our goals and our challenges, uh, what solutions we chose, a quick introduction to the module, which some of you, the guys that use SQL Server, are going to find a little bit interesting, and uh, then a demo. So we do start out with um, a, quite a number of slides, I think about 20 minutes worth, there and then the rest will be demo, so just Demos. be prepared for a couple slides. Heard some murmurs today. All right, so the background. Um, so we have, yes. The clock, oh, yeah. oh, I also have another clock here. We have 40 minutes, thank you. All right, so. Yeah, we, we caught up. So whenever it comes to PowerShell and SQL Server, uh, Microsoft could do a bit of a better job with the SQL Server module itself. And, uh, and so the community came and we made um, DBA tools. It started back in 2014 as startsqlmigration.ps1, but has since grown to over 380 commands with over 100 contributors on GitHub. And we have about 5 billion commands. There's literally no point me ever putting a number on these slides. It's always going Because up. it's always gone up by the time we actually put them in front of people. Even as if a, I'd done it an hour ago, there'd have been another one added. As a matter of fact, there's a PR right now for a new one that does uh, decryption of database objects, which is really awesome. So many of the commands that we have, uh, there's migration commands, but there's also ones that uh, get information or test for best practices. So here I am, I'm, I love using PowerShell. I've been using PowerShell for five, six, seven years. I work as a production SQL DBA. Getting this information, testing this information is really important. And I always say to people, if you can get something with PowerShell, then you can test it with Pesta. So I can write 
I can use DVA tools, I can get all of this information, and I can write pester tests against that. So this is what I was doing. I was going into clients, I was working with people, creating pester tests for their environment. And I was working with Rob. He was going around the world talking about Pester, and I saw this, and I was like, man, can I get a look at your repo? That is awesome. I loved the work that he was doing. And we were like, we need to create a module to enable people to do this. But how do we do this? This is, this is a complication. And we literally, we talked about it for more than a year. Backwards and forwards. We could try this, we could try that, we could try the other. We talked to a lot of other MVPs and people around the community, SQL and PowerShell. How can we do this? And we never quite got an answer until uh, about December, end of November, December time, wasn't it, that we, we started. And then we spent three months writing this module with, with a bunch of other contributors that we took from DBA Tools. And um, then we released this module in February. It was really awesome. We went from zero to 11 contributors in about two months. Yep. And we had a whole 1.0 module that was available. So, we, so we challenges. Sorry. No, that's OK. We talked about challenges. Click, madam. Yes. So writing a pest test for one SQL instance, really simple. Yeah, I can make sure, what do I want to do up there? Oh, max memory. So I can make sure that the max memory for this particular instance is set to the right level. I can write a pest test. That's easy. If I want to do it for another instance, yeah, just copy and paste. No worries, we can do that. Hey, phantom feedback. Uh, we, we can do that. We can just copy this test, change the value, easy. It's possible to parameterize pester tests. Hey, I said it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we've practiced that, I've failed at that completely. So I've written um, functions that are part of the PESA test to enable you to pass parameters in. And I've written configuration in JSON that enables you to set up different versions. And that's fine for me. I'm a nerd and a geek, and I like coding. But we wanted something that enabled everybody to be able to make use of it nice and easily. So when we're talking about configuration, we're not particularly talking about being able to do a configuration for two different instances or three different instances, but particularly to be able to have an environment like that. So production is our top line, and UAT is our middle line, and dev is our bottom line. So as a production SQL DBA, I'd want to know that my production environment is set up absolutely right, and that you do not have sysadmin on my databases. Yep. And for UAT, I want to make sure that my tester man has got everything that he needs to be able to do his job. we faced was output, a universal output. And because DBAs may need output instantly, something that's really awesome about Pester is bringing your boss, and I encourage this. There's another sort of output. We live in a world where we want to be able to spin up environments and uh, create things on the fly automatically, infrastructure as code. So I wanted to be able to put my PESTA results, my DBA checks results, configurably into my build server. This happens to be VSTS, but it could be anyone. 
And of course, how many managers are there in the room? Oh, zero wow. managers. Excellent. Uh, that is awesome. Or nobody that's admitting to be a manager. So the thing I always say about Power BI is us as technicians can create magical Power BI reports, and you can all do it. You don't have to be a BI experts that have things that move and change as you click on them. It means you can give that to your manager, and they're going to not Maybe they're going to be so interested in clicking and seeing what the graph does. And, oh, look, the bucket fills up and drops down. Not actually realize that perhaps this said 5%. is that you can use the title of your test and your context blocks and split on them to enable you to group your data. However, the bad thing about that is if you don't write the context of the describe block in the precise way, it breaks the Power BI completely. Claudio gets very upset. So this is obviously a challenge because this is an open source module. We want all of everybody to come and give us new checks, but we don't want to be sitting there going, no, 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 you need to put dollar open braces, dollar PS item, close braces, that needs to go at the end. No, at the end. No, not with the space, right at the end of the title. So the challenge was not only to figure out how we can make the output work perfectly with Power BI whenever it imports it and cuts it all up, but also to ensure that the community members, like he said, also use the same template. So something that was also a challenge is um, user simplicity. I totally believe, like with DBA tools, it's been very uh, widely adopted by the community. And I think that one of the reasons is that we made it so very easy. We made PowerShell easy, we made PowerShell less scary, and we wanted to bring that to DBA <coughs> checks. So we did know that one of the challenges is we need simplicity to enable easy adoption. Part of that is that we need an index for checks. So Rob had all of these pester tests in his repo, but it was here, it was there everywhere, and we needed a centralized uh, way to present this information. And we also needed an index for our configuration. Because we've we got 124 configurable items at the moment. <laughs> and then I think. Oh, and then is, is, is it, um, is it me now? Okay. Okay. And, um, Obviously, <clears throat> outputting, we want to be simple. We want to make sure that from our knowledge of working with DBA tools, we know that file system access is different because you get picked up by people all over the world who are using different language, different cultures, different permissions. So we needed something that was able to work in, in all of these estates, or as many as we possibly could make it work for. So what we needed to do is to create a redistributable, easily configurable pester test using industry leaders' checklists. And I've just stolen your line, so. No problem. <laughs> so with DBAs, a lot of times whenever we start, you know, how many of you guys have your own checklist that you go through daily, weekly, monthly? And we down that, pro download that yeah. probably from yeah. Jonathan Kehias. He has one as part of the Accidental DBA. There's Brad McGeehee, who also had a list. 
And so what we wanted to do was take those lists that everyone has agreed are best practices and make them easily configurable and redistributable. Especially as all of our DBA, tool, well, many of our DBA tools commands are, are making use of all of these SQL Server community industry leader blog posts and ideas about, you know, how you set up max memory. There's a formula for doing it that nobody ever remembers and has to go to a blog post. But now you can just use DBA tools. So we're incorporating all of that and just making it simple for people. And as we were talking about, we needed to, to enable the output to suit people, technicians, DBAs. Something's gone wrong. Hang on a minute. Let me just, uh, oh, yeah, that's broken. Right, I can go and fix it. To machines, to management. We wanted to be able to enable all of that as easy as possible. So we basically wanted to take that raw data and make it uh, faster to, uh, to work with. And then we also talked about the capability of providing a response and resolution. But we can't decide whether this is a good thing or not. Is it within scope? We still mm, don't know yet. We still haven't decided. Solution. The solution is DBHX, which we released in February the 22nd, and has had over 2,500 downloads to the Parashow Gallery already. We've, uh, because of our CI CD process, which you can learn about tomorrow or the day after with me, um, we have done 28 releases in the two months since then. And my apologies. This is what it looks like. So this is a module. Yeah, everybody knows that, created with a plaster template. But we've got our checks folder. And in our checks folder, we've got a load of files that end .tests.ps1. Because if you point invoke pester at a folder, it'll pick all of those tests up and look for the tags. Because that's exactly what we're doing under the hood. And the rest of it is exactly what you'd expect. It's the functions, it's the internal functions that we use. We are unit tests because we are good um, developers of PowerShell and we test our code before we pass it through. And a code of conduct, because these things are important. So when it came to configuration, um, there was something that was born out of DBA tools. Uh, one of our developers, Frederick Weinman, he is actually a presenter here today, um, he created something that grew into PS Framework. And this provides configuration items super easily for your modules. So you're thinking, what's a configuration? Uh, something like, you know, if you open up Outlook and you go to Tools and then Options, that's something that we provide within DBA Tools as well. And we thought that it would be awesome to use the same for DBA Checks. And this is basically um, what it looks like under the hood. Um, so we have the set PSF config, which is one of his commands. Um, and then we specify the module for DBA Checks. The name, we came up with the names, app.sql instance. Initially, when you load up the module and you're initializing it, you want to set the value to no. And then we have a description there. And it's ultimately stored in registry. And what this allows is when you execute your invoke pester, which we've wrapped up into invoke DBC check, um, that can grab all of the SQL servers to run against. And Rob is actually going to go into detail about this shortly. So we need to make it simple and easy for people to set those configuration items. So set dbcc config name app SQL instance. We've just seen how that's set in the background underneath the hood. Give it a value, SQL 2016, SQL 2017. Now when we run invoke dbcc check, it's going to run against just those two SQL instances, because those are the ones that we've given it. And then we decide. The business decides they need another SQL instance because somebody wants to play with a new toy. And there is this other one that you need to add into this particular configuration. Well, you just append SQL cluster on. It's, it's easy. And this is how it works within the PESTA block. Hopefully, you guys all know about PESTA. You understand PESTA. So we've got our described block with our title. We've got a unique tag so that you can pick just running one test to make it easy. We've got a combination tag. So that's going to do anything for connectivity in this case. And file name, because we have six different files in our checks folder, and you can run all of them. So you could run all the instant tests, or all the database tests, or all the HADR tests, or all the agent tests. So it just makes it simple to get all of those in one hit.
And then we say, right, we've got a configuration item. In this point, it's the network latency. Network latency is important to databases because we want to be able to blame the network admins <laughs> when it goes yes, wrong because it's not the database's fault. And yes, sir. It's never the network. Okay, it's, uh, it'll be the storage, but we've got a test for that too. Um, so what this is saying is, when we run our test network latency command, what is the maximum value that we allow to have for, for that round trip? So we go and grab that out of our configuration, which we set, and then we just get, go to get instance, which enables us to either go to the registry and get the value out of our configuration item, or the value that we specify if we gave it a SQL instance parameter. So we enable both because a DBA sat at his desk might want to be able to go invoke DBCC check this SQL instance because man in white suit with spaghetti hair is shouting over me saying, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. I need to make sure that I can just do that immediately. And then it's just a, it's just a pest test. Yeah, test our DBA network latency. The average total milliseconds should be less than the one that we define in our configuration because you don't want to be waiting on the network or the storage because it's never the database's fault. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. So the get instance is your command, which finds, given the context, gets the ones you want to test. Against. Absolutely. So, and it, and it gets them either out of the registry or out of the parameter that you define. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Right, so we have in, invoke dbc check, and you can specify dash SQL instance at the command line, or you can use it what's stored in the registry. And he's going to actually show you something that's even cooler later on. Now, whenever it comes to the values out of the box, we do try to go with best practices. Um, I think we looked up uh, the, the max latency, and I don't know if it was four milliseconds or 20. 40. Or 40. Four, four zero is the one that seemed to be the most that was said for people. If it's above 40 milliseconds, then there's a problem. So that was the one we chose. But it's things like having your, your diff backup should be happening daily. Your log backup should be happening every 15 minutes. Those are just things that we set from blog posts we've read from people from our experience. Doesn't mean that they're right for your environment, but they kind of work for most. This is what I love. So it's the importing and exporting of the config and I was so excited. Uh, Beard and I were doing a presentation for Bits, and I kind of had a really straightforward. You like that? Beard and hair. Beard and hair. I thought you were getting all excited about the configuration. I'm like, me too. <laughs> so whenever I saw this, I was just so excited because my configurations were really straightforward. And then he took that a whole bunch of steps forward. So tell him what you did. So this is our run book for this scenario. I am a production SQL DBA. I am working on pro application one production. And I set up all my configuration with set DBCC config. And I set the instance values and the max latency and the backups and all of those things that are required. And there are 80 tests there. And then I export that config and I put it in Git because I'm a good and dutiful person. I know that source control is important. And it's application one prod JSON, so we all know what it is. And then the hair does the same thing, but she's working on client one, system two, quick. Because these are quick tests for when something might be wrong, just quickly run some to make sure everything works. And she exports those as JSON into Git, and it gets checked in. And this means that when this happens, when we put this into our CI CD process, when we want to just use it ourselves, we can just import that configuration for application one production, and all I need to do is invoke DBC check. So it makes it really simple for anybody to be able to do this. And then, obviously, if we want to do the client one system do quick, because client one system two's manager is shouting, saying it's all broken, it's all broken, it's all broken. Import it, invoke it. We've got some quick results to know what's happening. You can do it from any machine. Any machine, yeah. anywhere. Bravo, love it, he says. Got to get a quote. Index. So the next thing is what we had talked about a little bit earlier with our indexes. So one so of the problems with DBA tools is there are 395,472,000 commands or something approaching that number. And even I don't know what they all, even you don't know what they all are sure. or what they all do. So we've got 80, we started with 80 tests. We've now got 84 checks. We've got 128 configuration items. That's just going to keep growing. So. Chris is like, we need to make this easy for people to find out 
What, I wanted what? to make it easy for me to, to, to see it. I felt blind whenever I was looking at all of our random tests. And so we came up with a couple commands. We have the get DBC check, which is the index of all of our checks. And that is also actually parsed um, through all of the, the tag formatting. Uh, we have the configs and then also a tag collection that's just kind of, it dumps out every single tag that we support. And to give you a better idea, I hope that you guys can see this. So we have the group, right? And the group is uh, the you know, database.test.ps1, and that contains all of those checks. Then we have the type, because as, as DBAs, we're going to be running this against either SQL instances or computer names, you know, if we're going to be using SIM. Uh, we have the description, the unique tag, so every single test has to have a unique tag, and then all of the tags uh, that you can call to call each of these tests. And there's some improvements coming to this, because we listen to what people say. And we had an issue where somebody said, these descriptions, I want more, please. I want more information here. Okay, we can add that in. And then somebody said an awesome thing, which nobody, none of us in the last three months had noticed. I don't know which check refers to which configuration item. How do I know what to set? Some of them are really obvious. The network latency max milliseconds is going to go in the network latency test. But some of them maybe not so. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to this. And we're, when we compile DBC checks, it's actually going to go and check the configuration and see which check it's against and fill another column in these results so you can actually get some more information about that. Output. So out of the box, what we want to do is we want to be able to send a mail message because we were told that automated systems that could run at 6.30 in the morning, so when the DBA came in at 7, he had a report there in his mailbox able to see. So we just wrapped around send mail message, but it's that. That was actually something that was in one of your presentations. It's reportunit.exe. So we take the results of the pester test and we run it through report unit, and then it automatically attaches that to the mail message, which is why we didn't just pipe it to send mail message. Then we have command number two. You try and say it. And what command number two does is it updates <laughs> the Power BI data source, which is easy to say without the DBCC bit in front. And that is actually part of the magic and the beauty of creating our Power BI template. And there's a bit more to that that we're going to show you in a minute. Oh, uh, and start DBC, yeah, sorry, start well, DBC so, yeah. Power BI. The reason yes. that we have a wrapper instead of you just executing that is because it tells, um, it's exactly the PBI location which changes with each of our modules, because we did include um, the Power BI template, and so that changes each time that our module version increases, so this will find it for you, and it'll start it up. And for the data people in the world, this is a Power BI template, as opposed to a template Power BI file. The, so two, we actually two include the things. P bit and the P bix. Yeah. So invoke DBC check. We've talked a little bit about that. It's literally just wrapping invoke pester, and it enables us output. So that's how we fix that problem. Nice and easy. As you can see, the job that fails last run outcome was not succeeded because it failed. Um, we want to be able to output XML, but we're wrapping invoke pester, so we can just choose our output file and we can choose our output format. We can put it in our system.working directory for our um, VSTS build or release, and then we can get those results published and displayed in our output. And here's the beauty with our command number two is that we can go and grab our configuration for different applications or different environments, or different systems, and we can tag update DBC Power BI data source, I wish we could find a better name for that, with an environment, app one prod, app two prod, app three prod, and they'll all go in the same place, and they'll all come out in the Power BI all together. I just thought of one, we can create an alias that's just update DBC data source. That would be beautiful. All right, you got it. <laughs> And this is what it looks like in the end. It is absolutely beautiful. We had Claudio Silva. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes? I'm a production SQL DBA. 14.88% failures does not feel like beautiful to me. Th this looks like... So you're supposed to just ignore that part and start clicking. 
Oh, I'm a manager. Sorry, I'm a manager. Yeah. Yes. So this is something that's just absolutely beautiful. And what's really cool is every time that we add to a test, it'll just auto-populate this. The reds are going to go down because they're going to start being fixed. And just for those of you who do use Power BI who are curious, um, we do use uh, Windows Temp DBA checks because Power BI doesn't support parameters. Um, at least it didn't the last time that I checked. So we had to write to a temporary location. What's awesome about that is when you start DBC Power BI, all you have to do is hit refresh and it's all of your data. And what you can see here is that you have your development environment, your production environment, your test, and then all of the different instances. How y'all like that? Some good stuff, huh? Yeah. But there are some things we didn't do. When we released this, we, we, you know, we, and we still say to people, this is a GitHub, this is an open source repository, please file issues and bugs and suggestions and enhancements. And a lot of the issues that we got were requests. Please, can you make it output to a database? Please, can you make it output to MS Teams or to Slack or come off a JIRA ticket or write to Twitter? And it's like, no. No, because this is just PowerShell. We have modules to do all of those things already. Um, as you can see, Gary already has um, an automated system which is creating this, which is firing into his MS team, Teams group to say the checks are finished. And he actually uses the path for the update, the, the update data source command and then points his Power BI at the network share. So any of the production DBAs all over the world in his environment can just go and get that one pane of glass view of those estates from those checks. It's absolutely awesome. Awesome. All right, so it's demo time. Off you go then. What's that? Off you go then. Off I go? Yeah, no, I thought you were going to do the demo. Oh, I can't even understand what you're saying. You can't, you can't do the demo. Oh, no. Oh. You're using that English keyboard. <laughs> Nobody can use it's that. It's foreign. You said the Francais keyboard. So. Occasion. <laughs> Occasion. The special Cajun one. So here we have a, for those of you, have you got my pointer? Yes, you have. Thank you much. Here we have two SQL instances, SQL 0 and SQL 1. And this is an availability group. So we've created an availability group. We can see that our worldwide importers database is all synchronized. Everything is beautiful. It's all working as we expected it to be. Now, if we wanted to write ourselves a check, we shouldn't really open um, Chrome, which I think is what I've just done. We can do something as simple as this. We can set, let's make that bigger. Then you can see that more better. Excellent. So we can set dbcc config. Uh, we'll choose our name, app, dot, cluster. And you see, we've built in uh, tep. So you've got entirely sense to be able to see what you're going to do. And we're going to have SQL 0. I think that was Fred. Fred, you built that in? I'll just say yes. And we're going to choose our instances. So we've got SQL 0 and we've got SQL 1. So what we've done here is we've defined that our cluster is, one of the nodes of our cluster is on SQL 0. We don't care whether it's primary or not. We just know that it's on SQL 0. And we've defined that our SQL, any SQL test that you run, please run against SQL 0 and SQL 1, because they make up all of our cluster. And then, of course, we need to um, set um, the domain name. Uh, here's the domain name. Oh, come on. That was worth a giggle. You got, you got a slight chortle. Slight chortle. So we do that. There we go. It's done. So if I want to see any of my configuration, I can do not that. I could do a get dbcc config value. I'll pick a name. Let's see if I'm checking the right cluster. Yep, SQL 0. Excellent. So uh, let's just make sure, you know, I want to check uh, my, that's not app.domain name, is it? Uh, well, let's do SQL. App.sql. 
instance. SQL 0, SQL 1. Excellent. Can I see a whole list of all of the configuration oh, items that are available, Rob? If only that was the next thing I was going to do. Oh, man, <laughs> so we love OutGrid View. So we would highly recommend that what you do is you go onto that issue on GitHub for the PowerShell team and say, please, can you make OutGrid View available for PowerShell 6? Because we use it all of the time. Or something that does the same thing. So here is our configuration items. So as you can see, Zoom, it doesn't work in an RDP, which is slightly annoying. You know, we've got things like our alert messages, 823, 824, 825. Are we about to get some horrible, nasty corruption in our database? You know, we want to make sure we've got alerts set up for those, and we're going to notify our DBAs. Um, you know, our severities. Who's, who's our database mail profile? And some of these things are things that we set. But... Can you set it a bit bigger so that we can see the description as well? No, not that. Just, uh, just expand it to maximize it. Oh, wider. Thank you. There we go. Better? Is that better? Yes. There cool. Um, you've, I've lost my track. What was I doing? Um, we also enable you with this check repos. You can see it's going to my module folder. But some of you have already written pester tests. So if you put the folder that those pester tests are in, and if they're in files that are named .tests.ps1 at the end, then you can encompass those inside, DBC, inside DBA checks as well. Now, are you going to write your checks to make sure that they work properly with the Power BI? Probably not. So you might break the Power BI, but everything else is going to work perfectly. And then if those are universal that you feel that all uh, or most DBAs can benefit from it, and you can also submit a PR to the repo because um, we are always open for more checks. Oh, yeah, all the time. So now I can just do uh, an invoke DBC if I could type. Invoke DBC C config, and <clears throat> we'll do a check of, come on, IntelliSense. Check of HS. Uh, in, in check. Thank you very much. No That's problem. why it's not working. Well.